Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at the 2024 Lexus NX 450H Plus. This is the luxury trim level. Huge shout out to Hendrick Lexus Northlake for providing this plug-in hybrid for me today. Check out their website, that link is down in the description. So this 450 is finished off in caviar with an MSRP just over $64,000. So powering this plug-in hybrid, this has the 2.5 liter inline 4 cylinder combined with the 18.1 kilowatt lithium ion battery pack. It's also paired to the CVT transmission and pumps out 304 horsepower, 176 pound-feet of torque. That power sent through the all-wheel drive system. This weighs in right around 4,400 pounds. It'll do 0 to 60 in 6 seconds with a top speed of 124 miles an hour. It also has a 14.5 gallon fuel tank. You'll see around 41 miles per gallon in the city, 37 out on the highway. This also has a total EV range of 37 miles and a wheelbase of 105.9 inches. Its overall length is 183 and a half. It has a width of 73.4, a height of 65.4, and its ground clearance measures in at 7.7 .7 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this NX450, let's start off with the hourglass shape for the grill for this model. That entire surround is finished off in a very dark gray trim piece, which matches this caviar paint very nicely. It's a good contrast, very subtle, but it's still prominent enough to show you the outline for this grill. Now the Lexus badge is also the forward facing sensor, which is a part of the adaptive cruise. There's a forward facing camera to give you that added visibility, parking sensors, and plenty of cutouts in that grill to provide a lot of cooling and give it a unique design at the same time. There's also three inlets just underneath that. And then this also has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals. The headlights and high beams have the triple beam design to them with the DRL just above that and then turn signal at the top. This also has LED fog lights in the lower section with some more trim accents just above them on both sides. And there's nice lines that come down the hood almost in a sweeping line. They don't come directly to the grill, so they curve inwards to give it a flatter appearance just above that Lexus badge. Now, as we work our way to the side, this has a set of 20 inch wheels finished off in that same dark finish as the surround for the grill. So again, it complements this caviar very nicely. Now there are some plastic trim accents. They're in the lower section of the bumper surrounding the fender arches and in the lower side skirt as well. Now this has body colored side mirrors with a camera, very small turn signal and some chrome accents which match the rest of the window surrounds. There's a sunroof, some dark finish for the roof racks there, and then very elegant lines that run down the side. There's nothing, nothing crisp about the side profile. Everything is just very smooth, curved lines everywhere in the lower section, and then there is one line going right through the door handles. So it gives it more of that luxury style vibe, which is of course nice to see. Now for the rear, body colored spoiler with the brake light and the wiper blade, this has LED taillights with the connector bar that runs right through that power trunk, backup camera with all the parking sensors, and then this can even tow right around 2,000 pounds. So if you have some smaller lightweight trailers, it's definitely something that is capable of those situations. Now as we work our way to the cargo space, there's the button on the key fob, or the one up underneath of course, and with the back opened up, Look at the amount of cargo space you have. There's the charging cable in here at the moment, along with a few other components, so you can get a feel for the amount of space that is offered. Now on the driver's side, there's a storage net to place some items. There's a little bit larger of a compartment on that passenger side, so you can fit in items sideways if you need to. And then underneath the floor, even a little bit more storage space where you can place some items if you need to. Looks like possibly some battery components are on that left side. And then of, of course you can fold down the back seats. You can remove this as well. If you need that much more interior space, definitely a very practical size for this SUV. And then the two buttons up top, the one on the right side will lock it. The one on the left side will just close it. And now a cool thing with the door handles is that they're actually fixed to the bodywork themselves. You can lock and unlock this from the back door handles too, but if I just push on this button on the back side, that is how you release it. So there's no gap between the door handle like most vehicles. I think it's a really cool design. And for this interior, check out the solid red leather. There's black leather surrounding it, of course. 
There's the all new design for the release handle. You just push on that to exit. Window controls, lock and unlock, and then even some brushed wood surrounded by a brush trim accent. A little bit of storage space down below. And then the red continues its way to the interior with black accents, of course. And at five foot 10, I have a good amount of space. I have the front seat set at my height. There's storage pockets, climate adjustments, and then some auxiliaries are located down below. And I have plenty of room, two or three inches above my head. It's a really comfortable seat. I really don't have any issues with it. Looks like they are fixed. Oh, they do go back slightly. So we have a little bit of a recline. Makes it a little bit more comfortable. So I could definitely fit back here and be able to go on maybe a long road trip if needed. Now there's the armrest in the middle along with two cup holders if you need to use that. And then the back seats have a 40-60 split. So the middle seat does not fold down by itself. Now there's a little bit of a pillar right there, but there is an additional window, which will be helpful to see around from the driver's seat. Of course, I will talk about that once we are out on the road. And then same idea for the front door panel. We have memory seating adjustments, window adjustments, side mirror controls, even more storage space too. And then a look at these heated and ventilated driver and passenger seats. Automatic adjustments are down on the side and it is a low SUV, so it's easy to enter these front seats. Now the steering wheel is finished off in solid leather. There's some brushed accents. On the right side, there's cruise control along with the lane keeping assist and a few other controls. On the left side, there's volume and tuning and a few other controls, which I will go over. They are not labeled on either side, but they will show up on the heads up display and that gauge cluster. So let's fire this up. You won't hear anything. It starts up in EV mode. So it's very quiet. We have the turn signal on there. And so now looking at the gauge cluster setup on the left side, there's the percentage for the power. So you can monitor the electric system. Right side is the fuel level. And then right in the middle, there's what gear you're in, miles per hour. There's another charge and eco meter along with some averages. And then if I go over to the left side of the steering wheel, just by pushing on these arrows, this is actually now on the head up display. So let's jump up to there. I'm not sure if you will see this on camera or not, but currently the bottom button is for the voice commands. Left and right are for your seek and track. And then the top is another Bluetooth control with your volume adjustments on this right side. So you can see what all of these are just by looking at the head up display. If I push on the very bottom button, it will now change those modes to where the bottom is audio, the top is your mode, and then seek and track is still left and right. So it's pretty cool to be able to see that. Very easy to be able to go through these while you are looking ahead at the head-up display. On this right side, now we can change these for the head-up display as well. So it actually doesn't show up on the gauge cluster. And if I push on this, we have displays for the head-up display along with the position. And then there's also cruise control and the distance pacing along with two blank ones. So they are just up on the head up display, no adjustments for the uh, gauge cluster set up there. So that is fixed, but it gives you a good amount of information. This also has steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. So those are finished off in more of that dark gray trim, which is a nice accent to see. Now on the left side of the steering wheel, a little bit of storage down below if you wanna place some items. There's the fuel cap release along with the power lift gate. You can close and open it. There's the odometer along with some dimmer switches for the gauges and one air vent. And then as we work our way to the infotainment system, this is a very large screen and it has some great graphics to it. On this left side, there's controls like navigation. So when you have that installed, you can pull that up. You can quickly get into your music, get to your phone when that is paired. And then there's some more driver vehicle information to go through. You can look at your driving assistance. Look at the amount of safety features that are available on this. We have the rear cross traffic, safety exit, lane departure, intuitive parking, which I assume is the uh, parallel parking, blind spot monitoring, pre-collision. You have a lot to go through there. You can turn those on and off, of course. There's some trip information along with the energy flow. So if you'd like to see where the power is being sent, there's also a charging schedule too. So you can set this up basically like a calendar in your phone. You can have this ready to go for when you need to drive, go into the all wheel drive system, even the TPMS. And then the last one, you have some various settings just to configure this the way that you would like to. So there are a lot, there's a lot of information to go through. 
which is nice to see. And then underneath that, still within the screen, are all of the climate adjustments. So heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, where you would like the air to go is on that one side. Climate adjustments are in the middle, so that way you can decide how you would like the airflow to be. You can close that, go into these icons here. These are basically shortcuts or your frequently used and your max heat and max cooling adjustments. Fan speed is just underneath that. Temperature dials are on the left and the right side, and then the AC and auto is in the middle. Now there is a physical button for power and volume for the radio, along with the defrosters and the heated side mirrors, as well as the rear defroster. Two air vents are underneath that. And then this has parallel parking, so there's a shortcut to that button. And then if I push on view, this is for the camera system. Now this is similar in Toyota models as well. Lexus and Toyota have this view where it will show you a 360 degree angle basically. So before you drive away, you can scan what you would like uh, to see. So that way, if there's anything in the way, you can of course avoid it. And if I push on it one more time, it goes back to that screen. Now underneath that, aside from my sunglasses, we have the wireless charging pad. Underneath that is hidden storage space. So I really like the design of that. There's a, a USB in the back there, 12 volt, if you need to charge any electronics, along with a few up top and a little bit of extra storage. There's even a nice red leather trim accent separating the upper and lower section. Within that though, we have the different driving modes. So if I turn this dial to the left, that is for eco mode, right is for sport mode, and if I push on it, it goes back to normal. There's really no graphic changes. You'll see the color change for the gauge cluster too, that is about it. But it's nice to have the different driving modes as needed. Now for the shifter, in order to put this vehicle into reverse, follow the shift pattern, you go into neutral, go up for reverse, it will go back into the standard position there. Top down view and then the backup camera is on that right side. And then you can change the backup angle just to, if you need a little bit different of a view, and then you can change the guidelines as well. Now, if I put this into drive, it's the same as reverse, just in the opposite direction. And by pushing on the view icon, now we have the forward facing camera with the top down view. So you do have to push on that button. Park is going to be right in the middle. And then when you are in drive, if you just pull it straight back, that activates sport mode. And then behind that, there's traction control along with this Christmas tree with the car next to it. I feel like that is an off-road setting downhill assist control for the four wheel drive system. And then on the right side, there's the EV hold charge and the auto EV HV. So those are different driving modes basically for the EV settings that you can go into. We'll see what those do once we get out on the road. Parking brake is just behind that, two cup holders on that right side. And then for the center armrest, you can actually open this up two different ways. That is nothing new from Lexus. They have always incorporated that, which is really nice to see. Plenty of storage space for all of those items, along with the glove box, which gives you an ample amount of space. This has a sunroof with the manual adjusting sunshade, all of the sunroof controls, along with the touch sensitive dome lights. And this even gets the digital rear view mirror. So if you need a little bit more visibility, right now, hopefully you can see with the uh, headrests up in the back, really not all that much visibility, but now we have a 180 degree view. And then just looking from the driver's seat, Pillar's not all that bulky from this angle. So you can see around, which is of course great. But let's go ahead and get this all new NX450 out on the road. As we set off now behind the wheel for this 450, let's talk real quick about these two buttons for HV and EV. After putting some miles on this, I have figured out HV is the hybrid system, of course. EV is for the full electric. And when you push on these, you can toggle between them. You can also go to the auto setting, so that way it will decide how you're driving, if it's going to have full power or just EV. If you hold on this upper one though, you can go into the charge mode. So this has regenerative braking, which I didn't mention earlier, being a plug-in hybrid, of course it will have that. So in charge mode right now, all of the power just coasting is going to the battery on the diagram and the gauge cluster. So you'll notice if I put my foot on the gas, all the power is going to the wheels. When I let off, all of it's going back to the battery. Kind of a cool diagram that's self-explanatory, of course, being an EV model, uh, but it's nice. It's very easy to go back and forth. So with it in the hybrid system, so full power, I have it in sport mode and as well as being able to shift using these paddles. So we'll downshift a few gears. And as we come up to a sharp left, this isn't a handling 
performance type of vehicle, but going around that turn, normal rate of speed, plenty of power to get back up and moving. So it's not the F-Sport model, it doesn't have the upgraded suspension or any of those components. But for a nice daily driver and driving it as you would this type of vehicle, it seems to handle fine, has a good amount of power. The paddle shifters are pretty responsive. So I like that you have those. And then even coming around a turn like that, it's very nice. It handles well for an SUV for just being a, a plug-in hybrid, more of a normal type of SUV. So it's nice to have that. You can put it back into a regular drive mode or eco or normal and just cruise. So it's a good all around SUV. If you're looking for something that's going to get some uh, better MPG, as far as driving in the city, 41 miles to the gallon, you're really never going to have to fill this up, especially if you drive this every single day. You're gonna go a, a bit longer between your fill ups. So if that's something you're looking for, it's a great option. I think the plug-in hybrid technology is really where it's at. I think it's better than strictly having an EV vehicle and then it's a benefit to having a gasoline vehicle to add in some more power, to add in some more benefits like having the pure EV. So if I just put it into the EV setting, we have 26 miles currently right now. I mentioned earlier 37 roughly and you can just cruise in EV mode. If you're leaving the garage, you're driving around parking lot situations, that's where the auto would put it into those, so that way you're not wasting any fuel. I think it's a great combination. I think a lot more vehicles, regardless of what it is, sports car, SUV, pickup trucks even, uh, it would be cool to have more of that technology, which I'm sure we'll see in the coming years because it's a great combination between the both. And with everything in sport mode again with the paddles, let's give it some gas. And we're up to speed. It seems quicker than it is, at least on paper. I'm not doing full pedal, I'm not doing the full potential for today, but it definitely has get up and go for, especially how much this weighs from a four cylinder engine, but combined of course with that EV system, it, it can get up out of its own way. It's, it's a healthy, adequate acceleration for this type of vehicle. But here's what it's, it looks like to drive this $64,000 Lexus SUV. As far as the pricing goes, honestly, I don't think it's quite that bad considering the technology that this has to offer. EVs and the hybrid systems tend to cost a little bit more, of course, for that technology and what they have to offer. 64 grand is still 64 grand. It's a bit more expensive than the average price of a brand new vehicle. But when you consider what you're getting for that money, you're getting a Lexus, so you're getting something that's going to be extremely reliable, something that's very comfortable to drive on a daily basis. You're getting that hybrid technology, which is great to see. And you're getting a lot of great materials on the inside, all of the leather, it's a great place to be. All of the wood trim too, you can get different options as well. I don't think this has the upgraded audio, so there's other options like that that you can of course add. So I think it's reasonable for the price. Lexus and Toyota also hold their value very, very well. So if you buy a brand new vehicle, you're not really going to lose that much money being a Lexus. Most Toyota Lexus owners drive their vehicles for 10 plus years. So this, this would be a great vehicle to own for that duration. But I think that's going to wrap it up for this all new 2024 Lexus 450H plus the luxury trim level. Once again, huge shout out to Hendrick Lexus Northlake for providing this SUV for me today. Check out their website, give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and consider smashing that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.